We'll go over a few things such as the bottles, uh, some PPE, and also the method of collecting a sample and the reasons why we would collect a sample before and then also another sample during the actual release. So before sampling, you want to order the proper sample kits. And there's two sample kits. So there's, there's a comprehensive sample kit. The comprehensive sample kit will sample more parameters, such as the bacteriological, the BOD, the TOC, COD, the oil and greases, and also a routine chemical analysis. And obviously with more samples, you'll have more sample bottles to fill. But a good tip is to put the name of the project and the sample date and time before you fill up these bottles. So you could take half hour to an hour before doing the samples to take each bottle out and fill out the proper information. Because I've done it where uh, I would sample it and then leave the site and then remember that I had to do it before I dropped them off at the lab. So I had to re-suit up with PPE, take them out, dry them and use a, a waterproof marker. And you can imagine how nasty that could be uh, handling them after you filled up each, each sample. Back to these, uh, this is the comprehensive kit. And then the basic kit is the samples you would collect during the release. So the comprehensive would be before release and you would let it flow for I guess two days to a week. It depends on how much you plan to release. So that you would have to determine that before you do the, the release sampling. So with this basic, it covers the, the CBOD, the TOCs again, and then the total solids. So with those sample kits covered, we'll, uh, Go back to this wastewater sampling checklist. So um, they mentioned here that it's good, good practice to order at least three sample kits, just in case you do uh, something does happen along the way of getting those samples to the lab. Mentions to avoid shipping samples on a Friday or during a scheduled weekend. So, so try to get them in shipped on a Monday or a Tuesday would work best, or if you can personally drive them into the lab, that would work best so that you can assure that your samples are in at a certain time. So during sampling, wear proper PPE, and we'll go over those. The PPP could include disposable gloves, protective glasses, long sleeve shirts, etc. cetera. Um, make sure that your sample bottles are clean and ready to be used. So directly from the lab would be ideal, and make sure that they're the proper ones. And it mentions here to, if you're sampling from a valve, purge the line free of debris before sampling. So that's where we were, we would open that valve and let it flow for a good half hour to an hour. And then we're gonna grab the sample from the actual point of it hitting the environment. And on this checklist, it is recommended to take a picture of the samples to have visual proof in the event there is an issue when the sample is analyzed. And also, also good for record keeping is to take notes or photos about the weather and observation about your sampling point, such as strong winds like today, heavy rain or snow, and any faulty equipment or algae growth. So that's why it would be good to do this inspection while you do collect wastewater release samples. So after sampling, put the sample bottles in the fridge as soon as possible or into a cooler like this with the ice packs. Be sure not to freeze them. You got to keep them at a certain temperature. Samples should be shipped the same day that they are taken or as soon as possible after and kept between one to 10 degrees Celsius. So this is in accordance with the, the WISER system, which is the wastewater system's effluent regulations. So we take these samples and each, each place or each nation would register their samples to their system. We're going to be looking at the discharge valve. So we're going to open this in theory, but right now we're not gonna open it, but we would open it and let it flow for a half hour to an hour. Um, so another little tip that I should mention, it's good to have a little line locator, just in case you're not 
able to find the valve or any of the manholes or valves around here, this is a good little thing to have. You can find you can find all the valves that you're trying to look for or anything metal. So this is good to have on hand when you are doing um, lagoon inspections or any valve exercising. So just carrying on uh, using the checklist, we can inspect this valve and you can see the lid is on there and intact and uh, will sit on nicely. Then we also want to look inside to make sure there's no debris uh, blocking the valve. So now we can go ahead and put the oh, valve in the shaft, make sure it's sitting nice. And then just like an isolation valve for a hydrant or a water main, we go lefty loosey and righty tighty. But for this exercise, we are not going to be opening this valve at all because we don't want to release any uh, effluent into the environment at this time. But I'm pretty sure, pretty confident that this valve will open when they need to. So we can pretend that we're opening it and there is discharge coming out, which is located just east of us. So we would let this flow for a good half hour to an hour. And always remember that it's open and you have to come back and close it. A lot of times this valve has been left open and any thing that's in the storage reservoir will drain and go out to the environment and that could be a disaster. So once we go collect the wastewater effluent sample, we'll come back and close this. And then once those sample results come back, and if they're good, we will come back, plan to open this and drain as much storage as we can. And at that time, collect the second sample and send it into the lab. So we wanna make sure to wear gloves anytime that we're handling any equipment that we have used in the past, such as this, my trusty pole that I've used, I don't know how many times, but as you can see, it's the telescopic type. Like you can still stay pretty far from the flow of the effluent and still collect a sample. But you can imagine this has touched a lot of wastewater samples. So before that, I like to use the largest sample bottle from the kit. And then fill up all the other bottles with that bottle. So I'll just use some zip ties and fasten it to the end. So with that fastened, we can put on our PPE and get down there and collect the water sample. And we're good to go. All right, so like we spoke before, we're not, we're not opening the valve to release the effluent. So we kind of have to use our imagination here and imagine it flowing like a nice little river right here. So we try to keep our distance, have good footing, release the pole out as far as you can. Collect a sample, fill up the bottle, try to have the least amount of air as possible. And bring that sample back. Try not to spill. And then begin filling all your other sample bottles from this one bottle. And there's one sample that has some powder in it. You want to keep that powder in there and then there's a line that you have to fill it up to. You can't fill it up beyond that. So this is a 200 milliliter sample. And then there is also some sample bottles that have a colored sticker on it. Those ones will require some preservatives and we can add them during the sampling but if not, if we want to gather the sample and we're in a place where it's not, it's not good to be, if it's not good to be down in safely, 
you might want to return to your truck and add the preservatives there. So once we have all the bottles filled up, we fill this last one, put the cap back on, and then return back to your truck. So once the samples are all in here, have your ice pack or ice, close the lid, and try to get that sample into the lab as quick as you can.